Good job, Paul. Alright guys, um, I'm going to do like a definitive tuning guide and this is going to cover all bikes pretty much. It's not going to be so much for like groms and fuel injected bikes, most of what we deal with are things like this, um, older bikes like that, SR50s, Aprilia, CH80s, all your like carbureted uh, 80s to 90s, mid 2000s scooters. And the way I'm going to try to break it down is on a whiteboard. And I want you guys to follow this, this, uh, I guess it's, it's my method on how I tune bikes or how I diagnose bikes, how I fix them. It's going to be everything from, you know, you get a CH80 or you get a CH1, you know, 250 or something like that. Barn find something doesn't run or somebody's project and how you can basically work your way down uh, process of elimination to figure out what's wrong with the bike. It's also going to cover if you buy a, say that you buy a bike like this from somebody who says it's got all the stuff done to it, doesn't run right, trying to figure it out. Um, so I'm going to chop it up into different sections because the way you would diagnose a bike like this that's built versus a bike like that, that thing over there that John has, it's been sitting for God knows how long, doesn't run. They're going to be two different, two completely different methods. Um, so stay with us. It's going to be a little bit long. I'll probably break it up in a few sections and make sure if you get to one of our videos um, in the series and you're like, okay, that sounds like my scenario, go down to the bottom and we're going to put links to, um, to the specifics that apply to that. For instance, if I say, hey, you buy a bike like this, you need to pressure check it down to the bottom of that video. I'm going to drop a link to our video to pressure test. So it's going to kind of take all our videos and 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 we're going to be able to point you in the right direction on how to diagnose a bike when i say diagnose like i said something that's sitting for a while something that you built uh or something that you bought that's already built it's going to be uh definitely a little bit lengthy as i said but make sure you follow all the way through it if you skip through a part of the video or part of the series and you ask questions later i'm going to tell you please watch the whole video because you really have to follow it from start to finish uh, it's a process of elim elimination. You can't, you can't skip through. You can't start it, you know, the very beginning and skip through all the way towards the end and then ask, how do I do this? Because you've got to work through the process of elimination. It's very simple once you can figure that out. And again, it's it, it's my personal method. It may not be the same as everybody's. It may not apply to every single scenario, but I'm going to do my best to make it broad. And, and split it up in ways where you can basically follow the chart to figure out what your problem is. So stick with us. We're gonna just start with just the basics here, guys. This video is gonna pertain to the, the bike type, which is gonna be your original stock or unknown. Uh, also, you've got uh, the Moon Man here. If, uh, if this was earlier than your days uh, or later than your days in life, I'm sorry, you missed out, but he's gonna start right here, okay? That's where the Moon Man's gonna start, Ronald McDonald there. So these bikes are gonna be your, uh, you buy a bike off Craigslist, it doesn't run. You, uh, your grandpa has a bike, your girlfriend has a bike, you, whatever. It, it's a bike that's complete um, and it's unknown, okay? So that's what we're gonna start with, that's really common. We've all got bikes like this and 90% of the time, if they're stock, they're going to be pretty simple to diagnose. You're just going to need a few things. So we're going to start there. This is just going to be to get you guys started at the point to where you can get the bike running. This is your ultimate goal. Screw swap shop, okay? Um, say you get your Honda Spree, whatever. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to bring it home. You're going to try to start it, right? Okay, pretty unlikely that it's going to start. Let's say you um, hook a jumper cable to it and somehow it fires right up. Perfect. Then we're going to just skip all this portion and go to video two, which is going to be the tune up, um, basically getting a bike to run right and making sure it's it's good and whatnot. OK, so we're going to come down here. So you've got your bike, you bring it home. It's uh, it's a uh, let's say it's a Tau Tau or it's a, I don't know, whatever stock bike. You can tell it has not been taken apart. 
if you get a bike that's been taken apart, that's a whole different scenario because everything kind of goes out the window. It's a basket case. This is going to apply to an extent. You can still do these things, but if your bike is missing vital parts, then this is all going to be a little bit more difficult for you. This is most common, and I'm, I'm just trying to walk you through how my, how my brain works and how it works, okay? So it runs. Yes, awesome. Go to video two. You can disregard all this. I don't know why you're here. Well, I do, but we'll go to video two, okay? So bring the bike home, start it up. Does anything happen? Nope, okay? First thing you guys want to do is check the battery. Does it have 12 volts? If it's old, it doesn't. I guarantee it doesn't. They're shot. Don't try to charge it. If you know the bike's been sitting for a year or two or plus, the battery's toast. I could tell you that right now. Don't waste your time with a charger. Uh, it will not work. Let's say no battery is does not have 12 volts and you're going to need a uh, let's do here. Let's say the tool. The tool is a multimeter. I'm going to draw here and then it's going to be your plus and your minus. You're going to touch it here and you want to see 12 volts. Look at that. Um, that's a multimeter. It's a little box. You can get them at Harbor Freight. Uh, you can buy a $500 multimeter. You can buy a $20 one. I would say at least, you know, you're not going to get something decent for less than about 40, 50 bucks. So get something decent. Trust me, this will be highly valuable and you need it in your toolbox. If you don't have 12 volts, guys, install a battery. Okay. Your next step, once you verify that you have 12 volts is, do you have fresh fuel? Okay. So battery 12 volts. Yes. Do I have fresh fuel? All right. No, I don't have fresh fuel. In this process, if you do not have fresh fuel in your bike, that means you have nasty old fuel inside the carburetor. You've got it in the petcock and all your lines. Um, so what you want to do is drain the system, fill with fresh fuel, whether that be two stroke fuel or four stroke. Um, at this point, if your lines look cracked and broken, you see uh, fuel leaking out, uh, that's a good time to replace your fuel lines. And also, I would probably pull off the carburetor if it smells nasty, the fuel's green, um, it, green or dark red, it smells like varnish. You know, you pull out that lawnmower, you got the garage sale, it stinks, it's that same nasty varnish smell. That stuff cakes up the inside of the carburetor. And we do have videos that I'll link down below on cleaning out a carburetor, how a carburetor works, and petcock videos too. If you're unaware of how to do this, hop down below, check those videos out. You wanna make sure you get every drop of fuel out of that bike. Whether that means taking the tank off, flipping the tank upside down, however you do it, get all the gas out of that bike because it needs to be fresh and clean. If you don't do this, you're wasting your time. Okay, so you got fresh fuel in your bike, you got a fuel filter, your hoses are good, your carburetor's cleaned out. Uh, now, what you're gonna do, does it crank? If your bike does not crank, you need to come over here, diagnose your starter system. So you need to make sure your starter relay, you're gonna hear it click. If you have a starter, you're gonna hear it click. If it's a ruckus, it works a little bit different because it uses the uh, stator as a starter. You're not going to hear that. You're going to hear a click, but it's going to be very, very slight. Actually, I don't even think you will on that. Most bikes are going to have a starter relay, okay? If it doesn't crank, you need to check that system out. It's very unlikely that it's your starter itself. Most of the time, it's a ground. It's a fuse. It's a connection of some sort. Most of the time, if your bike is stock and unfiddled with, this system is fine. Very unlikely it's a starter, but it does happen. Uh, so you want to diagnose the starter system. Now, I'll add here, if you have a kickstart, you can kickstart the bike in place of the starter, but typically the starter is going to spin it faster and do a better job getting that fresh fuel into the bike after it's been sitting for so long. So I would really highly advise making sure the system works if it has electric start. Like I said, you can kickstart it too, but most of the time I find when getting these types of bikes, well, sh this guy's all the way down here right now. He's, uh, he's right here. Uh, it, most of the time I find if you have these types of bikes like this, they will start easier and they take time to crank, crank, crank to get it to start. Now where we're at is you've got fresh fuel. You have the 12 volts. Uh, you have a 12 volt system. Your fuel's clean. Your carburetor's clean and it cranks. Okay. Now your bike cranks. We're sitting right here. Hey guys, a little update, uh, a little intermission. I'll take you to the shop here and show you two, three, three kind of new-ish, well not new, but uh, give you a little update on the bikes I'm working on. Bike number one, Rusty Spree. Just got this bike back. I owned it seven years ago. Stay tuned, there's gonna be some uh, videos on this bike. If you know this bike, you know this bike. Bike number two is the built uh, Prebug. That's gonna be my next wheelie bike that um, I haven't really done anything with, but it's it's dialed for the most part. You need to do some small tweaks to it. And uh, last but not least, um, these are Talarias. We're the uh, Oregon Talaria dealer now, which is really rad. Got a sweet little little digital display there. 
Um, if you're not familiar with these bikes, check them out. This thing is a lot of fun. And so we're going to start making parts for these. Stay tuned. You'll be seeing these as well. Post up below if you guys want to see more content on these versus other bikes. Your bike starts, right? Awesome. You've done this stuff. Your bike starts. Lucky you. Ronald McDonald here is going to come all the way here. If you're happy with it, you win, okay? If not, you're going to rip on up here over to video two and, uh, and you're going to watch that section. If it doesn't run great, we're going to just continue and take off on video two with just the basics on, um, you've got the bike running, but you're not happy with it. It doesn't feel right. It's not smooth. Difficulty starting. You're going to come over here. Let's say you, uh, let's say you do not have spark. Okay. Um, so we'll do the yes. It's going here. Yay. Um, let's say you do not have spark done all this stuff. You pull your cap off. What you want to do is pull the cap off the, off the spark plug, take another spark plug, put it in there, hold it up against the motor, um, and then you're going to crank it over and you should see a nice blue spark on the spark plug. Or you can remove the spark plug out of your bike if you want, and then you're going to take the spark plug, you're just going to stick it right in the boot like it was. Um, you're going to take the metal of the spark plug and you're going to touch it up against the motor case and you should see a nice bright blue spark. If it's weak or it's dim, um, it should still run. Uh, but if it's a really weak, really dim uh, spark, you're going to need to diagnose the ignition system. Okay, it, You're either going to have no spark. Make sure, of course, your kill switch is on, right? Um, make sure your kill switch is on, your keys on, all that stuff is good. Um, it's in the run position. If you have no spark at all, it could be the, the ignition system itself, or it could be that switch that you have above the handlebar. So make sure uh, you check both those things, all right? Your ignition system is gonna get a little bit tricky, guys. Uh, I don't know that there's a really good way to um, offer a lot of support because everybody's gonna be a, little, be a little bit different. Your ignition, you have uh, you have your, your three, well, actually your two main components, okay? You've got your stator which is um that's your flywheel your pickup and all that so that's that round deal under you know under your fan cover that looks like a little miniature flywheel okay that looks more like a donut but that's cool you're going to diagnose your stator what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to hop on your know, google machine and type in uh stator check measurements you know, uh, Honda Aero or whatever bike you have, you're going to have to get in there and check that. It's going to tell you, you know, if you have a GY6, you have a 12 pole, you have whatever bike you have, it's going to be specific. And there's a ton of videos on there. Take advantage of it. Um, you know, the buy any manuals, hop on groups, forums, whatever you absolutely have to have the multimeter to test the stator. And the other part is going to be the coil. That's very easy. Same thing. Just type in scooter coil test. I don't think we have a video on that. It's very, very simple. Um, but again, you do need that tool in order to do these things over here on the right hand side. I went ahead and wrote down the tools for a two, two stroke that you really need and the tools for a four stroke that you need. If you're going through this process, if you're going through this whole process and you plan on having a bike and working on it, maybe you want one or two, you need these tools, guys. Um, these are vital you are wasting your time if you're going through this process and you don't have access to these or you're choosing not to use them. Um, I will say this one right here, do a bunch of bunch of arrows there. Look at that, all those arrows. That one, the pressure test tool, okay? That is different than a compression gauge, two separate things. The pressure test tool, if you have a two-stroke guys, and you're doing any of this stuff here, or you have a new bike built, whatever, if you do not pressure test, again, you get, I mean, we've been doing this for a long time. I've seen thousands and thousands of dollars wasted because people didn't get that. Okay. The four stroke, you don't really need it for the four stroke, uh, but pressure test, it's a big, big, big deal. All right. Okay. So you've got spark. Yes. Guess what? The bike still doesn't run. All right. Um, we've kind of gone over the ignition system. You've got your stator and coil. That's not your starter. That's your, that's your stator and your coil underneath the right hand side where your fan is. Um, that's going to be the charging and it's going to be your ignition, uh, all in one. So, and it does do timing as well. We'll discuss that a little bit later. All right. So little dude's going to roll on up here, right here. Okay. So now these are the things you're going to want to check if, if it, you ha you uh, you do have spark. You've got fuel. Um, you've got a good battery. It's cranking over, but just nothing's happening. 
One of the first things, okay? So you have a two stroke or four stroke. Now, if you have a two stroke, probably the order I would check these things is one, missing parts. Uh, if you have no air box, if you have no exhaust, if you look at the bike and you're like, okay, something was supposed to be here, uh, then you need to make sure those parts are installed. A lot of these two strokes don't like, they don't run without an air box. Say you don't have reeds. Say, you know, if somebody tells you, yeah, this bike parked when it was ran, don't believe any of that. Okay. The lies. There you the go. Lies. There's bitch. The lies. Telling. After you've assumed, if you've checked, everything's on this bike. It's got the air box, has an air filter, has all these things all connected. Everything seems proper and tight and looks the way that it should. Again, Google search, guys. Look at pictures online. Ask questions online, right? Google search. So missing parts is going to be probably the first thing I would check. Uh, the next thing I would probably check is the reeds. Uh, no, I would do compression. So the reeds are, a, it's a one-way valve responsible for letting air into your bike, into the lower end of a two-stroke and not back out, okay? If your reeds are stuck open, you've got like a, a plastic, they, they seal like this, right? Okay, it's just a valve. They open and close, open and close. The air is gonna come in. It's gonna go into the bottom end of your bike. As your piston comes down, it's gonna build pressure. The reeds are gonna shut like this and the air can't sneak past the reeds. If your reeds are stuck open, that air and fuel is going like this, back and out, back and forth, back and forth, in and out of those reeds. So if those reeds are wide open, they typically they'll warp and they'll bend a little bit. So you have like a, a plate, right? A plastic plate and your reeds are flat too. Well, say the reeds are just sitting and they're just sitting open like this and they're just letting air in and out. Pretty common. Oftentimes what you can do is take the reed off and the reed is between your intake manifold. So you've got your carburetor. Here, here's your carb. It's a fist. And then you have an intake manifold that goes, typically goes down and then here's your motor. It's right here between your intake uh, manifold and your motor. It's a little block a little plastic plate that's got a fiberglass um all fiberglass reeds i'll pull some out and show you guys in a little bit but um check your reeds make sure they're sealed up good make sure they're shut oftentimes you can take them flip them over re-screw them back on um, that's pretty common too now in the process of doing this okay when you start taking the bike apart now you need to make sure when you put it back together you seal it up with a honda bond or fresh new gaskets because if you check the reeds and the reeds are not the problem. You take the reeds out, you put it back together. Oh, they look good. Put it back together. Well, if you rip the old gasket, which I'm sure you will because you've got an old bike, you're creating an air leak here. And now what you could, what you could have effectively done is maybe a problem with something else and you fix it. Well, now this is a problem because you have an air leak, which that's where your pressure tester comes, comes in. I'll talk about that later. So say you check the reeds, they look good. Uh, then you resealed it. Everything seems tight and solid. Uh, let's do one two, three, four, five. Guarantee, if you guys go through this process and you do everything I say, if you make it to this point, you're gonna find one of these things. Compression. Compression on a two stroke, you're gonna wanna see, and again, it has to be an, it has to be a uh, small engine. So here's a compression gauge over here. It has to be a small engine gauge. If you use one for doing big trucks and big vehicles, they don't work properly. You're wasting your time. Um, also, it's good if you have a compression gauge to check it on a motor that you know runs, okay? I think you need like, I think it's like 94 or 96 or something. Um, PSI 2 for combustion to actually happen. It's somewhere in the 90s, okay? So if you're in the 80s, 70s, 60s, 50s, okay, your problem is compression and you need to, you need to uh, home the cylinder, replace the cylinder, you need to put in rings, piston, all that. If you get to that point, then you, you need to look into rebuilding your top end on the bike. Is it worth it to you? Typically, you know, it's very rare you're gonna be able to do it for less than a hundred bucks or something like that. You're gonna to have to hone the cylinder and you're gonna to have to put in new rings, bare minimum, maybe a piston, maybe that cylinder you can't replace anymore. So uh, if your compression is is below this realm here, that's, that's your problem, okay? Um, what I typically like to see is um, compression. I typically like to see like, you know, 110 to 145 is about what you see. The higher the number, the, 
in general, the stronger the cylinder, the better condition it's in. It's got a nice good seal. Most of the time you're going to see things hovering around, you know, 110 to 125 is about most average. Okay, so you're gonna check your compression, you've checked your reads, you checked your missing parts, okay? If it still doesn't start, um, now what you wanna do is pressure test. And we have a video down below I'll put in about pressure testing. Um, this is making sure you don't have air leaks in your motor. If you have air leaks in your motor, you've got air getting in um, and you don't have fuel coming in, which means you're very lean. Lean means you don't have enough fuel uh, in that air fuel mixture. Uh, so pressure test needs to happen at that point. Uh, you need to hold, I would say, you know, six, six to seven PSI for like 10 minutes. Okay. And again, we have a whole video on that. If you pump it up and the gauge just drops all the way down, then uh, you've got an air leak somewhere. And again, check the video on that guy. And, and that'll explain how to do pressure check. Uh, timing. Timing is, this is very, very, very unlikely, okay? The only thing that can cause wrong timing is your stator. You have a flywheel like this. Let's see, this is gonna be kind of vital here. And then you're gonna have a hole in the middle of the flywheel. It's gonna look like this, okay? If you pull your fan off, you're typically gonna have like four bolts or something like that, okay? This is where your crank is. Your crank's right here in the middle. Now what you have down here is what's called a pickup. You've got to pick up with a couple wires on it. Again, this is your stator. These are responsible on telling the motor when to spark, okay? You've got spark. You've checked all this stuff. Everything's good, right? Now you've got a stator and you've got a little pickup or a little uh, tab here on the flywheel. So what's going on is this dude's going around in circles. As you kick the bike over, it's spinning. When this little, this little pickup here senses this guy passing it, it tells it, spark okay and it tells it to spark when the piston's at the very top of its travel now the way that that this flywheel knows the position to tell in, in correspondence with the piston going up and down is you have a key you have a little slot in the flywheel and your crank like this has a little key just like that that key locks the flywheel into the proper position. If this key is gone or it's broken, or it's sometimes I've seen where the crank is like, if you're looking right at the crank, it's like this, okay? You've got a little recess like that. Yeah, it's called a Woodruff key. And it's a little key that looks like that. I've seen it where it shears off. It's very uncommon. It shears off like that. And it's just flat because it's, very, it's a very small piece. Now, now the flywheel here, over the top. Now maybe the flywheel, the opening for the flywheel is there. The opening for the flywheel is there and the crank is here. So now you've got a sheared off key. Now what's going on is your flywheel is rotated back more, which means the timing for your spark is wrong. This is very, very, very unlikely. I'd say the odds this is your problem that the key is gone or it's not there is it's probably a to one percent chance what do you think the chances are of a guy like you and a girl like me just give it to me straight more like one out of a million so you're telling me there's a chance yeah it's very very unlikely so this is something i wouldn't check until the very end um i realize this is this is very complicated but if you skipped past any of this stuff and you're asking questions about this, you could be going completely down the wrong road, okay? Basics, start with the basics here, okay? What you guys need to run, you need fuel. You need good fuel to run. You need spark to run. It's required, you need compression to run. Compression is that pressure in the cylinder that's gonna cause the gas or the, the fuel in the air to, to um to mix properly, okay? And then it's gotta get spark to combust. If that mixture isn't pressurized in that cylinder, you're not gonna get spark. You're not gonna get, you're not gonna get um, uh, combustion. Have to have compression, guys. Timing, and when I say timing, it's this. Your timing has to be in the right position. It's, uh, if you guys have ever worked on a car and you put the distributor in and you put it in wrong 180 degrees out, it will not start. You've got spark, right? But it's not sparking at the right time. You have to have it spark at the right time. 
This is where timing comes in. This theory is gonna be the same on two stroke or four stroke, it doesn't matter, okay? So we've gone over the two stroke stuff, and at this point, you are gonna find the problem. It, you could have something weird, okay? Say you have a hole in your piston, right? Your compression's gonna tell you that. Say you have an air leak, there's a crack in the block somewhere, a crack in the case. Your pressure test is gonna tell you that. Uh, say your Woodruff key is broken off. That's a timing test, okay? So all of this stuff is gonna get you to, to where you need to be to get the bike running. It's gonna be one of these things, okay? If it's not one of these, work your way back and figure out what spot you missed back here because I guarantee you work through here, you're gonna figure it out. These are simple machines. They just need, they need these basic things to run right, okay? So we've done the two-stroke stuff. We've got videos, like I said, uh, multimeter, pressure test, compression gauge. Those are the things that you need for a two-stroke basics uh, to, to, diagno to diagnose it properly. All right, so you've got a four-stroke. Four-stroke, you've got valves, you have a chain, timing chain, you have a camshaft. I'm not gonna go over those specifics. Look up how four-stroke works because again, they're guys that have all the kinds of, I mean, I'm using Ronald McDonald here and a sticker and a Sharpie upstairs. Um, I'm just giving you the raw information. You guys can kind of take with it uh, what you will to apply it um, to the bike that you have. So you got a four stroke here, okay? You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna check compression on your four stroke. We've already talked about how to do that, all right? That's a really easy test. Just do how to check compression on a scooter, really easy, all right? Now, another problem on a four stroke is you have valves. Sometimes these valves, they get stuck open. Uh, there's an issue with the valves. What's up? Hey, uh, do you wanna get Chick-fil-A for lunch? Sure. Yeah. What do you want? Surprise me. What is that? Junk street bike. Junk street bike. Yeah, I don't I don't care. Just one of those chicken burgers chicken, with some fries. Chicken burger fries. Yeah, you got it. Alright. You want yeah. a cookie too? I do not want a cookie. Wow. Yeah. Thanks, Pop. Okay. Um Alright, so you got a four stroke here. You gun check compression. We explain how to do that. Uh, I don't have a video on checking compression. It's very simple. Just Google search or hop on YouTube, type in uh, small engine compression check. Very simple, all right? Valves, we've talked about. Your valves open and close. If they're, if they're not opening far enough, you're gonna have to adjust your valves, all right? And again, we don't do, we don't do a whole lot of four-stroke. I mean, we did. We don't do a whole lot of four-stroke videos because most of what we do is two-strokes. Um, so hop on YouTube, type in how to adjust scooter valves. Very simple. You're also gonna look for the right, um, uh, you're gonna look for the right measurement, the right clearance uh, on your valves, and you're gonna need um, your valve adjusting tools over here. Okay, if your valves aren't opening it, opening enough, you're not letting in enough air and fuel, that's really common or it sticks open and that air and fuel mixture is going back and forth. So valves are important, okay? Timing we talked about, timing is the same scenario here. However, timing is more complicated on a four stroke because you have a chain. Um, you have a chain on a four stroke. Okay, let me think about that. Excuse me. So timing is gonna be this kind of, you. so for four stroke, you have the timing, your cam timing. You have a chain that wraps around your crank and it goes up to the top of the motor. It rotates a camshaft around. Those have to be timed properly for the valves to open and close. Don't have a video on that. Go ahead and type in, you know, cam timing scooter and you can look, but it's gonna be specific to your bike, CH80 and whatnot. This is gonna be very, very unlikely, okay? Very unlikely the timing's off. Most likely, it's going to be your compression or your valves. That's going to be most most the issue on a four stroke. If you've gone through all this, at this point, it's probably going to start. If not, it's most likely you get most likely your compression uh, and or your valves. Okay. Um, if you have a compression issue, again, you're going to have to look into rebuilding the top end. At that point, if it's worth it to you to do it, you know, depending on the bike's value, you know, take that into consideration. You want to rebuild the top end on a you know, CH250, it's probably going to cost you three, four hundred, three hundred bucks, you know, something like that. If you're going to do it on a, you know, Honda Elite, like a 94 Honda Elite, it's, you can do it as cheap as, you know, $80 or you can do a big bore kit, whatever. Um, so if it's compression issue, you've got an issue with your rings, your, where your rings are seating to your cylinder, uh, that, that they're not seated right or they're totally worn out. Um, your cylinder scratched up. That's really common too. Valves, 
Uh, if they're not opening and closing properly, they're stuck open. That's going to mess up your mixture and your compression as well. So check your valves, which we have over here, your valve adjustment tools for the four-stroke multimeter and compression gauge. Valve adjusting tools are going to be shims. It's going to be the feeler gauge to make sure the valves are opening and closing properly and that clearance is right. You may need a special screwdriver uh, or a special tool to do that as well. Your timing is, is you've got your ignition timing, which is going to be similar to this, right? Same theory, but you also have your cam timing. So you're going to have a chain. I don't have any room, any room over here anymore, but you're going to have a chain that goes from your crank all the way to your camshaft and they're going to rotate, right? If, if the, if your, your cam has rotated one way or another, um, and it's not in sync with your camshaft, your valves are going to be opening and closing at the wrong time. Like I said, very, very, very unlikely that timing is a problem. If it is, you're going to have to look into how to time your cam timing on that specific bike. And it's going to give you tools again, that that's like very unlikely. Also, I have seen, I have seen clogged exhaust before. That's uh, not as common either, but I have seen where like wasps have made little nests inside of exhaust pipes. I have seen when they don't start. So uh, make sure you can take the pipe off, take an air compressor, blow through it or blow through it with your mouth. Make sure it's moving enough air. When you go to crank it over, put your hand on the back of the pipe, see if there's air coming out. Again, that's not as common, but if it's something that was outside and there's bugs and wasps and all kinds of stuff going on in there, Check to see if you have a clogged exhaust. I have seen that happen. All right, guys. Uh, thank you. I know this is a bear. It's a lot. But uh, please, I'm, I'm telling you, if you go through this process, top to bottom, the whole entire thing, you will get your bike to run or you get left at this point and now you've got to figure out how to, you know, rebuild your top end, adjust your valves, check your timing, seal your motor up, which we have videos on the two stroke stuff, which I'll put down below. You have to go through this top to bottom. If you go through this whole entire thing and you make it up here, okay, none of this applies. If you still have, you know, uh, if you have old fuel, you didn't put fresh fuel in, you didn't get it all out. All these things have to be done a hundred percent. You say you get all the gas out of the bike, but you leave it sitting in the bowl of the carburetor and the lines are full of old fuel. It's not going to start. All right. You have to make sure you're getting all the old gas out. This has to be 100 percent fresh fuel. Make sure you've got fuel in the carburetor. Make sure your fuel is flowing. You need to do all of this stuff before you get to this point. If you go over here, you decide to take a shortcut because you think you're going to save time and then you rebuild your top end or whatever and come to find out you just didn't have fresh fuel out of your fuel system. You've wasted time and you've wasted money. Um, this works. I've been doing it on bikes for years, you know, whether it's a Banshee, whether it's a, it doesn't matter what it is. The theory applies. It's all the same, uh, two stroke, four stroke, carbureted scooters, quads, whatever. Um, this works for me. Now, maybe somebody has a different method. Maybe somebody wants to do compression first. Maybe somebody wants to do this first. Okay. However you want to do it. Um, if you're starting from scratch and you don't really have a whole lot of experience, you go from here and you work your way all the way through this. Um, and you're going to get the bike to run or you're going to figure out your problem. Next video we'll do, we're going to do a tune up on, um, and the tune up will apply to the, say you got this bike and it runs The tune up's going to apply on just the basics, not high performance bikes, not built bikes. It's just going to be the basics on, um, you've got a stock bike. It's going to be real simple. That should be really simple. Just a few things to check. The an original bike is going to be more consistent, right? Because you know what you're dealing with. It's not a mixed match of stuff. Uh, so stay tuned for this video. Thanks for watching.